Good evening, everyone. Hello and good afternoon. Good morning. And as I said before, good evening. Um, <clears throat> happy, happy Monday. It is November 14th, 2022. And I wanted to come on and do something different today. Um, I've been wanting to talk about this for the past couple of days, but I just couldn't find the time nor the words excuse me, to properly express myself. But before I get into it, um, make sure that you continue to like, to comment, and most of all, share and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot. Like you guys have no clue how much your interaction and your um, support means to me. It really does keep me going. So uh, if you would like a coaching session or a reading um, in this modality or outside of this modality and you want something more one-on-one -on -one, you can log on to my website which is psychicvideo.com at psychicvideo.com okay so now that i've gotten the formalities out of the way uh, oh and you can also follow me on various social media platforms i swear so much to plug okay but anywho now that i've gotten that out of the way i wanted to just come on and discuss two things I wanted to give my thoughts on the recent passing of singer Aaron Carter. Um, and I wanted to give my thoughts on and about, um, if you guys are familiar with the show Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, I wanted to give my thoughts on Little Scrappy, Little Scrappy and Mama D. Okay. And the reason why I'm putting them together is because. If you look at Aaron Carter, may he forever rest in peace. And if you look at Lil Scrappy and you look at their mother-son dynamic, it's very toxic. So I'm going to start with Aaron Carter first. Um, for those of you who don't know, Aaron Carter passed away at the tender age of 34 years old. Aaron Carter was best known for being Nick Carter's brother. Um, and he had success at a very young age. And there was a point in time where he and his mother, they were really warring with one another. Um, unfortunately, the Carter family has kind of a history, if, from what, if I'm not mistaken, they have a history of substance abuse. Um, and Aaron kind of, as the years went by, he went on kind of a downward spiral, he did, uh, from doing drugs to um, you know, just a lot of what some of us would call bizarre behavior to, um, you know, getting his face tattooed to even him doing OnlyFans. And now, I mean, the preferences of my saying, there's nothing wrong with doing OnlyFans. If you are, because I'm a firm believer that sex work is work, and if that's what you choose to do, go for it and have a grand old time. Nothing wrong with it. Um, but what I really want to talk about is not just his passing. I mean, he died so very young, so very young. And for me, Aaron Carter wasn't, because it was funny, because people were saying that Aaron Carter was like, for people of the 90s and the early 2000s, he, he was our Justin Bieber. I'm trying to remember. I wasn't an Aaron Carter fan, per se. I was more of a fan of the Backstreet Boys and the Sync. So for me, Aaron Carter was, I'm going to think, was Aaron Carter like popular when I was in high school? I think he was. I just wasn't a big fan. I could never get into it. Um, yeah, I believe so, because I think he had his first album at like 15, 16. But I guess what I really want to talk about is just the toxicity of the mother-son dynamic because all he really wanted and he talked about it up until the day he passed was that he wanted stability he wanted a family mainly with his mom he wanted he and his mother to get along there were points in times where um his mother like she was um accused of stealing money from him uh, she treated him more like a man, like a client than a son. It was just a lot of different things. And I, and 
it just begs the question, you know, does mother always know best? You know, and we often talk about toxic fathers, right? We talk about toxic, you know, baby daddies, how baby daddies ain't shit, you know? But we normally don't ever talk about how the mothers can be just as bad. And mind you, let me say, I'm not bashing moms. If you are a nurturing, loving, supportive, open, honest parent, and you happen in your mom, then you're great. This is not about you. But if you are using your child, if you are manipulating, if you're gaslighting, if you are teaching your child not to question because you are the authority, then this is who I'm talking to. And if you look at Aaron and what he went through, it, it kind of goes back to that. And not just the mom, but that whole entire family dynamic. And I saw an interview with the mother that took place many years ago. I actually started kind of doing that. And I want to call it a research, uh, but looking into, you know, like his dynamic. And I saw an interview with the mom and it was all about her. And she referred to her children as they, as them. And I, and the first thing that, and that was the first thing that kind of struck me because I was like, well, who refers to their kids in third person? And it was more about, well, look at what I've done. Look at what I've done for them. Look at me. me. It was more about her than it was about, you know what? Those are my babies. Those are my children. And I really need to get my stuff together and be a better mother. And I'm not saying that, and, and here's the thing. I think, I hope, I like to think that maybe she did do that before, you know, but I don't know. Nobody knows. But it it just really made me look at like, especially in terms of notoriety or celebrity or whatever, how oftentimes we want our parents, you know, because if you look at like the Holly Robinson piece, if you look at um, the Tisha Campbells, if you look at the Tashina Arnolds, you know, their mothers were the, the Shawnee Wilsons, their mothers were their managers. You know, and oftentimes when you look at things like that, especially in, in the realm of entertainment, you often want, especially when you're a young child, you often are looking for not only stability, but you're looking for protection. You're looking for safety. You're looking for security. And who do you look to? The first teacher you ever meet in your life is your mom, your mother and your father. You know, those are your first, those are your first leaders, your first teachers. Those are the first people that 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 not only tell you but show you, you know what life can be like, um, and so it just really made me look at just his dynamic and thinking, hmm, maybe mother doesn't always know best because we've always been told, well, you know, mother knows best and da 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 da, you know. But even if you look at not even just Aaron Carter, but look at because um, I honestly do believe that I think she, not saying that she was she was to blame in totality for what went down in his life, but I think she was part of it, along with his own personal choices, too. Um, you know, and I'm not judging him because trust me, honey, we all got blood on our hands, myself included. But it just really made me think about that. Um And it makes me look at other people too. Like, and this kind of goes, I'm, this is why I'm going into Lil Scrappy. So Lil Scrappy, if you guys don't know, he's a rapper. He's known as the Prince of the South. And um, I'm trying to think of a song that I know him from. I, the only song that I'm familiar with Lil Scrappy is the um, the Whisper song by the Yin Yang Twins. Wait, you see my, you know that. I know him for that. I know him for the remix. Um, but he recently um, confronted his mother. And, and I shouldn't say he confronted her, but I think he poured his heart out to his mom in a recent episode. And mind you, I stopped watching Love and Hip Hop Atlanta years ago. But of course, this clip or clips, I should say, it went viral. And it's him basically talking to his mother 
and him com confronting her while pouring his heart out and saying, listen, I grew up in a whorehouse. I grew up with a mother that was doing drugs. I grew up, you know, I needed you and you weren't there. You were too busy trying to make money and hustle than be a mom. Um, and what got me about that in particular, that particular thing was those scrappy scrappy is a grown grown man right has a has a wife has kids has all of that but what i saw was a man that was in pain and i shouldn't say a man but i saw a child that really wanted his mother to not only see him but to hear him because often especially and i'm gonna go into like communities of color and I shouldn't say because it's because white people go through this too. But often we're told as kids, and especially if you're my age, right? If you're my age and older, you're often told, I'm the parent. I make the rules. What are you questioning me for? I'm the authority figure. And so when we go to you with our pain and say, listen, this is the pain that you cause, whether you know it or not. Though you did the best with what you knew how to do, you know what I mean? Because I don't, I'm, I don't buy into that whole thing of, I did the best I could. I don't buy into that. I say, okay, you did the best that you, you did what you knew. You didn't do the best. You just did what you knew. Because if you did the best you could, then you would, you would, you would look at every option. You would look at every you know, every um, resource, but you didn't do that. You did what you knew. Um, and and sometimes that can be good and sometimes that can be bad. And in Scrappy's case, when he told his mother how he felt, she made it about her. She was like, well, you know, but what about me? And what about what I went through? And what, and, and my stuff and my parents and you know, and I was going through, and what I noticed was that she shut him down. She not only shut him down, she shut him out, and she made it, she she literally switched it and made it about her to make him feel guilty for not only pouring his heart out and being honest, but for questioning her and calling her out, you know, calling her to the carpet. And often we wonder why a lot of adults as we grow, right? A lot of, you have a lot of people, a lot of people who are older who wonder, well, why don't my children come and see me? Why don't they come to visit? Why don't they come, like, you know what I mean? Why are they not around? The reason why that is, is because you as a parent, you're not allowing your child to come to you as an adult and say, listen, I know that this is going to sound weird because in your head, you probably think that you were Donna Reed and you did everything right, but you hurt me here. And you may not see that. And I understand that. That's not, you know, but I'm telling you, I'm expressing to you how I feel. And I need you to hear me. I need you to understand. And I need you to see the pain I'm in, to acknowledge it. And really with Scrappy, that's really what he wanted. He wanted acknowledgement and he didn't get it. And it was really sad to see somebody break down like that and be so raw, you know? And even when you think about another, like, and I'm using reality stars and celebrities just as examples, but also I want to get my thoughts on it. But if you look at even like Candy Burris, like there's a clip, we all know it, the, that's my mom clip, right? Where she gets emotional about her mom. And it's like, yes, that's your mother, but your mother is human. Your mother's a woman. You need to, ex there's nothing wrong with saying to your mother, yes, you're my mom, but I have the right to execute boundaries with you. I have the right to tell you no. Because oftentimes, a lot of parents feel like well, I gave birth to you, I did this, I did that, and you owe me. And my thing is this right here, and I have news for parents that are watching this. Your kids owe you nothing. Nothing. 
we owe you jack. And the reason I say this is because one, no child is asking for you to have them. Let's start there. Two, uh, you know, this wasn't their decision. And three, okay, you had us. Thank you. You know? So it's like, yes, we owe you a thank you. We owe you gratitude. But we don't owe, but, but here's the thing. We don't owe you the right to take, well, I'm your mother. You should take care of me. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. You're not going to force my hand. I don't have to do anything. Because if you look at Candy's thing with her mom, that's really what it is. Her mother holds that over her head. Like, I supported you. Her mother does that. If you look at the, if you look at Evelyn Braxton, her mother does that with her daughters. Um, or, excuse me, her mother. If you look at the Braxtons, Evelyn does that with her daughters. If you look at, I'm trying to think. I already mentioned Mama Dean a little scrappy. If you look at, like, if you look at so many, hell, even if you look at Naomi and White on the Judge and their dynamic, she held a lot of, and may she also rest in peace, but she held a lot of things over White on his head. Because if you actually watch her, there's a docu series they did some years ago. And yeah, you could just tell that they loved each other, but they didn't like one another. And that happens. That doesn't mean that you don't love your mother or whomever is taking took care of you, you know, and gave you guardianship, but sometimes you don't like each other. And that's okay. But I guess with getting back to Mama D and Little Scrappy and Aaron Carter, what I just noticed was you didn't when you don't allow your children to have a voice, to have voices of their own, to think for themselves. You get a lot of toxicity. And unfortunately, you have, when they go out into the world, who has to clean it up? You know what I mean? The girlfriend, the boyfriend, the, 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 the friends. You know what I mean? And especially if they don't have the tools equipped to really get themselves together, you know, and it's just, it was, it, it's just sad to see, and especially with Aaron Carter, it was really sad to see because Aaron, I think, deep down was a really sweet, shy, lovable person. I think he had gone through a lot, but I think deep down, he was, he just really wanted to be loved and he really wanted to be cared for. And you can't fault him for that. You know what I mean? Like who doesn't want that? And then I think with Scrappy, Scrappy just wants to be heard. Scrappy just wants to, his pain to be acknowledged. Scrappy just wants a mother who can be a mom. Because the thing about Mama D is that Mama D is like so, not all, but so many mothers and fathers who they had their kids young. So their kids, are, you know, now their kids are grown and they want to go out and act a fool. And here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with you wanting to go out and have your fun. You deserve that. Before you had children, you were a woman. You were a man. Have your fun. But at the same time, prioritize. And unfortunately, if you couple that along with her hustle mentality, right? Mama D has a hustle mentality. Everything for her is I gotta get it. You know, get them before they get me. She's a survivalist. And I can relate a lot to the little Scrappy and Mama D because I have a mother a lot like that. You know, I can relate to that. That whole, well, what do I mean? What I went through. And it's like, but j just as he said, that's your baggage. I'm giving you mine. Don't put your baggage on me. And unfortunately, a lot of parents tend to do that. They tend to project a lot of their stuff onto their children and they wonder why their children either turn out really screwed up or they bypass it. And they're like, you know what? I bypassed this. But because of that, I don't want to deal with you. You see? So it's just, it, it, it just, I don't know. It was just on my heart to discuss. So 
I just wanted to bring that to you guys and just kind of, you know, give my two cents on it. Um, but I now want to know what you think about this. What do you think about Aaron Carter and his dynamic with his mother? I just saw a very, in my opinion, very passive aggressive kind of parent, um, which was very toxic. And then with Scrappy, I just saw a lot of gaslighting. But I want to know, what do you think about this? What do you think about Aaron Carter and Lil Scrappy and Mama D's dynamic or just the mother-son dynamic when it's toxic? What do you do with it? How, how do you deal with that? And if you've gone through that, tell me your story. Let me know in the comments below. I just wanted to come on and say something about this. So until next time, my sugar bears, it is me, Leo Brown. And I say to you, be learnable, be teachable, love yourself, and most of all, be you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.